My name is Michael Kirk Douglas, and this is my Vanity Fair career timeline. My father did a movie in Israel called Cast a Giant Shadow. I think it was about 1966, 67. I was a PA, but they were doing one scene, and the local driver couldn't drive a Jeep up to the spot um, that had to be exactly up to the camera angle. So my father said, oh, Michael, throw a uniform on, get in there, and you can do it. I went, oh, my God. So I had total stage fright and everything else, but I was a pretty good driver. To this day, of all the things I've done, I think Dad is as proud about the fact that on the first take, I whipped that Jeep up and I hit my spot just like that. See? And that was the beginning of the end. You didn't come home last summer. I was in jail. You got a great body. I think you're freaky. Hail, hero was about a young guy who did not want to go to Vietnam War, um, and he was a hippie, had long hair. What would happen if every soldier on both sides would just try to love instead of hate? And in the picture, my father, Arthur Kennedy, cuts my hair off. So because of continuity, they had to make a wig for me so I could have my short hair underneath. Everybody's so worried about how long hair is. Nobody seems to care how long wars last. And just as the picture started, they fitted me with my long-haired wig, and I looked exactly like Veronica Lake. It crossed my eyes like this, and it was one of my first movies, and I thought my career was over. The Senator, don't all wars just stink? Yes, of course they stink. The Streets of San Francisco, a dramatic new television series from ABC. Michael Douglas is Inspector Steve Keller. The streets of San Francisco, I was mentored by Carl Malden. Carl Malden taught me everything I knew. We did 104 hours of television together over four years. TV was a wonderful experience for me because you were tied into a series, you know, a, a one hour show, that's eight and a half months nonstop, six days a week because we were on location. That series allowed me to get Comfortable with the camera was the most important job in my life in terms of what I learned about uh, both acting and producing. <laughs> How about it, you creep, you lunatic, mental defective? <laughs> one flew over the cuckoo's nest is one of the great great novels uh, that ever was written by ken kesey i read it in 20th century american lit and by chance my father had optioned that book and had it adapted into a play and had done the play on broadway in 1960. unfortunately the play was not a big success so he was unable even though he tried for five or six years to to uh, make it into a a film meantime i had begun my acting career i'd done two or three bad movies it was sliding into doing episodic television and fbi medical center and dad decided that he was going to sell cuckoo's nest i said to him please don't sell it it's such a great project. Let me run with it for a little while. I'll promise to get you your, your money back, uh, producing credit. I'll work hard to get you as the, as the star, the actor in the picture. Um, well, the fact is that Dad did not get the part in Cuckoo's Nest, which he harbors to this day. He's going to be 102 in December. What he is happy about, because it was such a great, great piece of material, is that we won five Academy Awards, and Jack Nicholson, who played his role, did a, did a great job. And my father, who shared in the back-end producing deal that I had, probably made more money on that picture than any film he's ever done. Would you please do me the courtesy of looking at me when I'm speaking to you? This is exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, if you had any kind of manners, if you... Romancing the Stone was one of the first efforts for me after I'd won an Oscar as a producer, but was still just a television actor from Streets of San Francisco who was trying to make it in the business as, a, as an actor. What a comeback! 
shot. So they really didn't want me. It was really up to a chance when we found Kathleen Turner and that we were able to get the picture good done and I could play the part of, of Jack Colton. Romancing was one of those great scripts which read well, but you had no idea how difficult it was to actually make. And so I will be eternally grateful to Kathleen Turner as my female co-star. I don't know any woman who could have gone through what I put her through on that location. You fell! You! Oh, shit! So where's your wife? Where's my wife? Fatal attraction. It was the ultimate nightmare, the, the story about an adulterous fling. I just want to be a part of your life. Oh, this is the way you do it, huh? Showing up at my apartment! Well, what am I supposed to do? You won't answer my calls, you change your number. I mean, I'm not going to be ignored, Dan. I worked very closely with Sherry Lansing and Stanley Jaffe, our, our producers. When we went out to try to get a director to do the picture, the one director who said he wanted to do it, Brian De Palma, said that he would do it, but he didn't want Michael in the role. Um, he didn't think I was right. My producing partner, Stan Lee and Sherry, said, well, he's in. I remember uh, we brought the picture to France, and everybody said, the French said, well, no, we all have mistresses. This is not a problem. Every single French wife dragged their husband to that movie, and it was a huge success. I guess he thought you'd get away with it. Well, you can. You see that building? I bought that building 10 years ago, my first real estate deal. Sold it two years later, made an $800,000 profit. It's better than sex. Wall Street, I, I really am totally indebted to Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone supposedly was looking for an actor that had some kind of business acumen. Um, I was a producer uh, at the time, so I guess he thought I knew something about business. And that was a, a, a great part combined with a wonderful director, great ensemble cast, and one of those nice moments where it all comes together. Also, I will remember not so fondly, Oliver's um, intensity and trying to bring out the best performance. A lot of times directors will be like the patriarch figures dealing with their children, the actors who are vulnerable and try to support them. Oliver always, as a Vietnam vet, always had a feeling of, you know, being in the trenches. Trench warfare out there, pal. Hey, Georgie. So there was a reward factor when you finish some of those scenes. That Oscar particularly meant a lot to me. As a second generation with a father that was a, a big movie star in his time, it really allowed me for the first time to step outside of his shadow. And it gave me the, the confidence um, that I was standing on my own. Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. You're in over your head. Maybe, but this is how I'll catch my killer. Basic instinct, the of the century. We all wanted to do a slam dance. It was kind of getting to be a kind of a conservative time, and we did it, man. Paul Verhoeven was the right guy for the job, and uh, that picture sort of speaks for itself. Everybody has their own story. Gene Triplehorn, who plays uh, my psychiatrist in the picture, remembers looking at the call sheet for the day and saying, hmm, 12 pairs of rip-away panties. I wonder what this means. You were right. It was the of the century. What would happen if I called Sydney Wade and asked her to be my date at the state dinner on Thursday evening? <sighs> the president can't just go out on a date. I'm having dinner at the White House. Aaron Sorkin, Rob Reiner, Annette Benning uh, was great. Just for me, a dream because it was the ideal liberal democratic president. I always thought Rob, as the producer and the director, geared the picture more to be kind of a political statement when in fact it was a wonderful romantic comedy. Would you like to dance? Yeah, I guess. I mean, yes, sir. I'd love to. As a result of that picture, I got invited to the White House for a dinner for the French president, just like the movie, with uh, President and Mrs. Clinton. Thank you. Oh, 
Thank, thank you so much. So behind the candelabra was an emotional moment for me. I had just come out of stage four cancer. I was in remission. I was alive. I'd lost um, uh, at least two of my friends through the same kind of cancer during that period. And I was offered this wonderful opportunity to play this, uh, this character. And because we had to wait for a while for me to gain weight, it gave me a longer rehearsal time to get the piano down and, and all of that. I will forever be, be, be grateful to Richard Legravenage, the screenwriter, uh, to Steven Soderbergh, and to Matt Damon. Matt Damon, who's a great kisser, by the way, a great kisser. Good morning. You need to be skillful, agile, and above all, you need to be fast. Hold on. You gave her wings and blasters. So I take it you didn't have that tech available for me. No, I did. Here seems to be a movie that worldwide brings people together, makes them laugh, have a good time, and remind us about the magic of movie making. I am into the beginning of my 50th year in performance art. It was really bad in the beginning, really bad. My father would be the first one to tell you and just grind it away. So for all those out there who don't feel like they've got any natural talent, just listen to what I'm telling you, grind away get better.